Go download my free Legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. It's four core exercises that you need to focus on in order to reach the highest level of mastery. And then I'm going to give you the three sub skills of Legato. Once you master these three little skills, then the overall skill of playing very fast runs using hammer-ons and pull-offs will be very easy. So go sign up right now and get immediate access for free. See you in the course. So, um, <clears throat> let's have a look at the first sequence uh, from this uh, run that I played before uh, in the previous video. What I'm doing is, is, is very simple, actually, and that's the, really the power of this sequence. It has another advantage over just being uh, a simple one-string sequence that you repeat across the neck or across the strings. It's also um, a matter of because when you're tapping, <laughs> when you go from string to string and you have to make the string shift with your left hand, you have the fourth, the third, and the second, and the first finger. And the fourth finger is actually very good at tapping. Just, you know, when you go from... It's, it's pretty, pretty good at that. So every, any sequence that uh, changes strings by using the fourth or the third finger or even the second finger are very um, uh, effective sequences because you don't have to you know uh, do this with the first finger and you're usually most people are uh, not very good at tapping with the first finger initially uh, but it's as easy as tapping with the other thing fingers you've just been using this as a kind of a uh, as a backstop or as a bar across the strings uh, and not so much as a... Um, because you know when you're playing three notes on one string you do like that, the first finger just stays there um, so it's used to just staying there and but we're going to look at, at, at that uh, challenge in another video but this sequence has no f first finger tapping it's it's a uh, fourth finger or third finger when you change the strings and that's uh, go from string to string and that's really uh, a great help. In this example, I've chosen the C uh, minor um, pentatonic or the C blues scale in the first position. So we're in the eighth fret here. We have the C right there, and you have your standard first position blues scale right there. You know, you have a minor interval on the low E string, eighth and eleventh fret. Then you have these uh, three notes there in the eighth. 9th and 10th fret on the next string, then the next string looks like this. I ho hope you, or not hope, I, I, I assume you know this shape. Then you have the 8th, the 10th, the and the 11th, and then you have two minor thirds again on, on the top strings here. So what do we do? Well, on the first string, uh, we simply do this. Let me just kick out the, the sauce here. Um, um, I'm simply... Uh, in the beginning, this looks a little. The first string looks a little different because it has one extra note. But what I'm doing is, uh, I'm. T if you imagine, you have your two pentatonic notes here in the eighth and the eleventh, and then we add one up here, um, from the next vertical shape, you might say, in the thirteenth fret. This gives you this structure: eighth, eleventh, and thirteenth. And you just place your fingers there, and then you start by tapping with the fourth finger like that, and then you tap with the first finger over here, so, and then you pull off again with the, with the first finger on your right hand, so you go, you just get a little bit of this, like that, tap in the 13th fret, and then release it again, or pull it off, downwards, so you really, not just remove it, but really pull it off by pushing it downwards, or upwards for that, for that matter, so you go, Tap with the fourth finger in the eleventh fret. Tap with your right hand first finger, and then pull it off again, and then pull this one off. That's the first little bit. So, again, fourth finger eleventh fret. Tapping, then tapping. First finger right hand, thirteenth fret. Pull it off again. 
and pull this one off. So basically, you're going up from this one and then down from this one again. So it's one, two, three, and four down to this. And the next thing you do is just you just tap this thirteenth, uh, the note in the thirteenth fret on the high E string again, and release it down to not release, but <laughs> pull off down to the eighth fret again. So you go, and then so that's the whole melody. And then you just repeat it, and the second time around you have that string uh, sounding out. So it's very easy to, for you to go tap that note again with your f uh, fourth finger and then go. Let me play the whole thing slowly, but fast enough for you to get the melody in your head. No, sorry. <laughs> And that's the whole thing, <laughs> almost. <laughs> the rest is details, but uh, what you do with this then is just sit down, because this is, this is the, the whole run encapsulated into one, uh, one string exercise. And if you can do the one string exercise, going from string to string is going to be uh, relatively easy, or even just easy. Uh, so you go. And practice this with a metronome, say... Whatever tempo. I have a hard time playing metronome with my mouth here. But just, and then you just play this over and over and over again. And what you then do when you shift strings is you just play the exact same thing. So you went from... Right, that was the whole thing. Then you, instead of starting over on this string with your fourth finger, you're just starting over on the B string with this finger. And because the scale looks like it does, it's the exact same frets on the B string. So now you have two strings. You can go... And then... Two, right? So instead of staying on one string... You're just going... a lick in itself there and you can start moving that you know vertically but just going for the next string or you can move it up um, but we'll just do that in a second so let's look at the next string because now we've played then the next string you find the notes in the eighth the tenth and the twelfth fret here in the key of C minor um, and so these are the notes on the G string so we have the 8th, the 10th, and the 12th fret, just two whole tone intervals here. And you do the same thing, but now you tap with the 3rd finger, so you go... And then... You do the same thing, but with this instead of that... So you go... Next string... Next string... Then on the next string you have the 8th, the 10th, and the 13th fret instead of the 12th. So we go tapping with the 3rd finger again in the 10th fret. And you do the same thing in the same frets on the A string. And then you can do it uh, in the 8th, the 11th, and the 13th fret on the low E string. Just the same frets as on the high E string. And then you can practice going up again. So you can take it back and forth, it looks the same way, because it's a one string sequence really, that you're just moving up and down. Um, so let me play that 
just the whole thing slowly. Or semi-slowly. So, very effective, uh, and not that hard to, to practice. Uh, if you start on one string and just go... and get that down first, and then go for the, the other string. And what you do with this, of course, if you're new to it, is that you, s you first use the metronome, practice it uh, in time, so you have a... da 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 click, 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 click. That was against the sound. Click, click. See if you can play it in time. So you don't want certain parts of this, to, uh, certain parts of this, to be faster than other parts. You don't want to practice like that. You have to practice in time. Do not do this. That is the, just a recipe for disaster, and you're not practicing anything when you're doing it. You're just practicing becoming a very bad, out of time uh, player. <laughs> so don't do that. Uh, instead, use the metronome. Click, click. Ba da 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 da. So in other words, this finger here should be totally steady. Da 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 da. Totally steady, rhythmically. So that's what you do with the metronome, and then you just set yourself in in front of the TV for an entire week, each night, three to four hours, watching stupid sitcoms or whatever. You can watch something that's not stupid as well. It also works. And then you, with your metronome training, go. Don't play it fast. Play it perfectly. Do not make mistakes. That's why you say that perfect practice makes perfect, and that actually is true on the on the guitar. Uh, making mistakes while you practice is not a good idea to repeat the same mistakes over and over again. So you just practice, just let speed follow, and then you'll fall. Because this is tapping and hammer-ons and pull-offs, you very quickly discover that if you just stick with the the fully focused Ah, uh, not fully focused because you're watching sitcoms, right? Or a movie. While you're doing this. Da, 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 da. And then gradually, after, you know, three or four days of this, it just becomes blah, 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 blah. It just becomes one movement. And that's when you start listening for, are there any notes in this that are not clear? And, um... It's often the when you go from string to string, and then you can start, you know, working on that and really emphasizing or even exaggerating those string shifts there, listening for them, and focusing on them as you're playing fast. So. That's about it. Uh, for the uh, actual run that I showed you in the previous video, we're in the key of A blues instead. And, but we're using a three note per string uh, shape. I'm just not going to go a whole lot into that, but uh, the three note um, and scale shape stuff here, but we're basically playing in octaves. And the, um, let me just see here. What we're doing is we have, we're in the key of A, uh, minor or A minor pentatonic slash A blues. And what I do is I, I start in this uh, three note per string pattern up here, and this pattern actually ends down here and allows me to go down to the A again. Uh, we're going to take the ascending motion in the next session because that's something else I'm doing there. But so you have these three notes up here E, G, and A, and we're in the 12th, the uh, 15th, and the 17th fret on the high E string. Now those are the notes there, so just mark those out in your mind. Minor third and a whole tone interval from the 12th fret on the high E string. Then on the other string, and this is the whole shape that repeats itself down the neck, uh, you have 13th, 15th, and 16th. So you have that little, that little bluesy note there. 
If you want to play strictly pentatonic, you can just replace this note in the 16th fret with the one in the 17th fret, and you have no blue note. It also makes it the same frets that you're tapping here, which makes it a little bit easier. So, what I'm doing there is the same thing. I go... <laughs> something like that anyway. And all I do then is just do the same thing, but one octave lower. And that would look like this. On the G string, you have a note in the 9th, the 12th, and the 14th fret. So that's that's the same thing as up here, only, only one only one octave higher. And then right here, uh, on the D string, you have a note in the 10th, 12th, and 13th fret. And that's the exact same shape here as up here. They relate to each other in the exact same way. What you do to get this right is that you mark out the, the place where you're shifting strings. So, in your minds, I, so you go... And then you mark that spot, that 12th fret there, uh, on the G string. You just mark that out in your mind's eye, so you can go... And then you know you're going to hit that note right there in the 12th fret with that finger, and that's how you change and go back to another or go down to another position where you can do the same thing. Of course, it repeats itself on the lower two strings here, and that would be on the E and A string in the 7th, the 10th, and the 12th fret. And then you have the 11th, the 10th, and the 8th fret. But just look in the tabs, um, and then I move down to the A again there. So that's basically the sequence. But then I add just a little thing to get this uh, whole thing started. So instead of tapping, or you can of course do that, you can just start on the second note in the scale, or your th three note uh, scale here, um, or, you know, how it looks on the E string. <laughs> and, and then you, um, uh, instead of just starting there, you add a note, you add the first note on the string. So you just add that, and you can pick that, you can come down from that, you can go... So that's where you start, actually. But I didn't include that, because that would mess up the, the logic and the simplicity of the sequence there. So all you do is just play... But instead of going... You just hit that, that E there in the 12th fret first. So it, it comes to... Instead of going... It just goes... Da -da 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 -da. So, so there's a little inlet there. And it works really well to use that first note. Um, so you just add that one note there in the beginning. A little uh, way to expand it is to, to move your first finger in, in the right hand. So instead of... Um, let's go back to the C minor shape in the 8th fret instead. And... And because you can you can do a little variation here that actually makes the lick more complex. Uh, instead of going that last note that you're tapping on each string, you move that down to the next note. So you go, and then instead of tapping that, you tap this, and that makes your hand go back and forth like that. So you go. So instead of having that uh, anchor point or that pedal tone up there. You move it so you get a sequence that sounds like this. But that's that's another challenge, and I recommend that you start by a, by learning that sequence first, and then going because of course when you're jumping back and forth like that, you risk not hitting the actual note, and you can't really anchor your your hand because that would be logical to me, just anchor my hand, and then have the finger move instead. But that's not really practical, because the angle of the finger goes like that. So I'm hitting one note like that, and another note like that, and that just doesn't work, because my nail is in the way here when I'm tapping like that. So you have to move your finger. Um, but it's an option. Uh, but start with just the simple... And just get the get the experience of being able to play super lightning fast without having to spend you know months on it. 
Of course, this takes time. If you're a beginner or nearly a beginner, this takes time. But you, ha if, let's just say you just practice this like an insane person for a month each night, just in front of the TV, you just kept going back and forth. And then when you can do it like the fastest in the universe, you can, you can, um, you can start playing stuff and then getting... <laughs> and start integrating it with what you know already. So you, you, you build that into it, so you can really use it when you improvise or play solos. So those were the words, and in the next video, we're going to look at, um, we're going to look at this uh, upwards motion or this ascending run where we're doing something completely different. So until then, have a great time practicing this if you do want to.